She is the representative for District 19, Lori Pohutsky. Pohutsky, you are so young. I mean, to be your age and doing what you are doing, you are the future of our country and the next generation. Thank you for being with us. We appreciate it. My pleasure. I'm actually a little bit younger than I look, so sorry, that was my dog. Um, I will take it. I found another gray hair the other day, so that does my heart good. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> I know. Whenever it, us as women, as we get older and they still card us, I'm like, can I tip you for carding me? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, but you are, you're in your 30s, and I think you're such a great example for the younger generation to let people know that we can all get involved and to be a part of this process. What sparked your interest in politics? So uh, prior to running for office, I, I was a microbiologist. I was working in uh, the research field in terms of healthcare diagnostics. And uh, I, I love science. I'm a huge science geek. I never really saw myself not in that field, but just kind of with the way things changed after 2016. Um, you know, things were going in a direction that I did not like. And as someone who supports evidence-based policy, um, has a deep respect for science, you know, I saw that there were a lot of laws coming out of the state house, uh, the legislature as a whole, that had a basis in science, but there was no one there to really advocate for sound uh, scientific policy or, you know, ask some, some questions that people just didn't think to ask, didn't know to ask. So, uh, this was, you know, a, a historically Republican held seat. I'm a Democrat. I figured the worst thing that was going to happen was I would lose an election and I would embarrass myself and that's okay. Um, but so here I am. And we've all learned there is actually no failure uh, because it just leads to our next win in life. And what has this process been like for you to go through the election season? And now we're coming up on another one what has been the ups and what has been the downs for you? I mean, it was challenging to say the least. It's by far, you know, running for office and uh, being a representative is both the most challenging and most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. Um, you know, it's hard work. I, I worked throughout my, my first campaign um, because I didn't really have an option not to. Like many people, I couldn't just, because I, I campaigned for over a year. Uh, so, you know, that would have been a long time without a paycheck and I do have a mortgage and things like that. So, um, it was hard to, to juggle both things. I had a lot of people that were able to, you know, help support me, including just, you know, sending over a casserole when we need a dinner. Um, but it, it was definitely challenging. Um, you know, the, the, the politics can get dirty. So like some of the attacks that, you know, came out last time and have come out this time, it's interesting because I, I don't know that person <laughs> that's on those postcards, it's on those TV ads, um, but that is part of it. So, you know, that's that's a, an uncomfortable thing, but it's it comes with the territory. Um, but being able to represent the people that elected me and to be that person throughout this crisis in particular, this the pandemic, um, has been a huge honor and it's been very, very rewarding. A fair amount of this job is just constituent services, uh, connecting people with resources or, you know, finding the answers to questions that they might have. And that certainly went into overdrive once the, the pandemic hit. So that has been, um, you know, a, a huge honor. Representative Lori Pohutsky with us. She is from Michigan. She is a Michigan state representative from district 19 joining us today. On the Oakland County Megacast, Lori, recently there was some funding passed uh, and on the state level that that um, was provided for education in our state with these school with our schools really in a tough spot this year, having to adjust to a complete to completely different formats of teaching and learning and providing additional resources throughout the school district and, and tightening up their funding uh, and the pocketbooks in order to operate at all this year and, and plan for the future as well. How critical right now is that funding to these schools and what has it allowed them to do adjusting for the circumstances of this year to continue education as is expected in their school districts? So the funding is, is pivotal. Uh, school funding is always pivotal here in Michigan. Unfortunately, we have been underfunding our public schools for quite some time. 
And the, the concern in most communities, certainly in mine, was that because we are dealing with the deficit uh, due to the, the necessary response for the pandemic, we were going to cut the school aid budget because unfortunately that's happened a lot. And that, that was a, a very valid concern. Um, fortunately, that's not what happened. And in fact, there was a slight uh, increase for per pupil funding. That is by no means going to save the day, uh, but it was a very necessary increase to say the least. So, you know, like you said, what, what schools have had to do in response to this and make sure that they're able to educate these students in a safe manner and, uh, you know, to keep everyone healthy, staff and, and students alike, uh, costs money. You know, that might be in terms of IT, it might be in terms of making sure that the kids who rely on school for simply eating a meal are still able to get those meals. So, you know, that per pupil funding increase can go to things like that to make sure that even though we're in this unprecedented time and there are additional costs, some of those can be covered and we can make sure that these districts have the ability to meet these students where they are and keep everyone safe because this pandemic is not over. And as the, the cold weather hits, I think that we're gonna face a, a very significant challenge. So making sure that they have the funding needed to uh, meet that challenge is pivotal. I worry so much about the the kids where maybe their home isn't their safe space or it's not where they, you know, it's not their best learning environment. It's not where they're actually getting their, you know, nutritious meal of the day. And I worry about those kids at the end of this pandemic and what's happening to them and how far back they are going to be. So the good thing coming out of uh, Lansing is that uh, both sides were able to put together put aside your differences to try to address some of these issues so that we can do what we can do for so many of these kids because they are going to be the future of our state, um, you know, when they grow up in, you know, 5, 10, 15 years. So thank you for all the work that you and all of our elected leaders are doing uh, to try to get us through this pandemic. And I will say, first time lawmaker and to go through something like this do you feel like you could handle anything that comes your way now you know i i say regularly when i was running for office i was talking about how it was important to have a microbiologist in the legislature and you know diverse backgrounds and things like that and i studied the last pandemic we had uh the 1918 pandemic so this was not on my first term bingo card. This is not what I saw coming, right. uh, but I am very grateful that I'm there. Um, you know, it was definitely like a trial by fire, you know, uh, and it, it was certainly not just me. It was certainly not other lawmakers. Our staff, uh, you know, in all of our offices had to rise to the occasion. Like I said, a lot of this came down to constituent services and there were no off hours. Uh, we had you know, the people in my office were working at all hours. They were, you know, sending emails back and forth at one, two, three in the morning to make sure that we were getting through this backlog of cases, particularly around unemployment cases. Um, so I do definitely think that we are better for it. And I think that my office functions better for it and that I am a better lawmaker because of it, yeah. And because of your science background, I wonder what issues that would maybe be on the forefront had the pandemic not happen. Some of those issues, could they be, you know, pushed aside right now because we're in a crisis mode and so many times those do involve the environment. So once we come out of this, what do you want to see happen with so many of the issues on the environmental side that we're not addressing right now? So, when we talk about environmental issues, I, I agree with you. I think for a lot of people, that's not front and center right now. And I represent a district where consistently from the time I started running in 2017 up until you know the pandemic first hit in March here in, in Michigan, um, environmental issues were their top priority. Uh, you know, water contamination, air quality, things like that. And I do think that that's not necessarily front and center, but I think it's really, really important that we recognize that all of the issues we were talking about before the pandemic hit, things like education, healthcare, yes, the environment, all played a role in what the pandemic looked like here. So if we're just looking at the environment, 
there are areas that are facing, uh, you know, really poor air quality, and the residents of those areas typically have uh, respiratory issues every day of the year. Uh, water quality, uh, water contamination, depending on what's in the water, sometimes suppresses the immune system and causes, you know, uh, other underlying health health effects. And then when you put a pandemic on top of that, those areas were hit even harder than areas that weren't facing those env environmental issues. So I understand that right now people aren't necessarily thinking about PFAS contamination or, you know, air quality from the uh, that's being impacted by the, the Marathon Petroleum Refinery. But those issues are still very, very connected to the problems that we're facing during the pandemic. The pandemic exacerbated those already existing issues. So I, I know that it's very difficult to look at those through the lens of COVID-19, but I think it's very important that we do because there's a reason that all of these issues were so critical this time last year, even you know, back in February, uh, they're still very, very important. And I think that the pandemic has actually underlined why they're so important. We've just kind of seen a different perspective of it. So with that, Representative Lori Pahutsky from Michigan's 19th District State Representative, where do you go with, with legisl from a legislative standpoint, from a committee standpoint on the state level, to talk about these issues and address them from, a legislator, from the legislature's perspective while there's so many other issues going on that may seem like more primary issues, so to speak, with people of both, from both caucuses? I think that it's just important to underline why they're still important, why, you know, these became, uh, why these issues were exacerbated by the pandemic. You know, this is not something that anyone expected to experience this year. This happens, you know, once every hundred years or so. So we need to plan understanding that these things happen. You know, we aren't just talking about water quality on, you know, a, a, a normal day where there are no other complicating issues. We're not just talking about education funding when schools aren't scrambling to make sure their IT infrastructure is, you know, up to snuff because students have to suddenly learn from home. Um, but making sure that we don't lose sight of why these issues were made worse by the pandemic and understanding that as policymakers, it is our job to plan for these worst case scenarios that do come up because this time it was a pandemic, it could have been something else. I mean, in the middle of the pandemic, we also had this massive flooding and you know these, these dam failures in the middle of the state. So it was a pandemic, it could have been anything else. So we need to understand that these issues don't go away depending on you know, what crisis we're facing. And frequently, these types of crises make these things worse. So the, the legislation that we introduced throughout this entire term, and, you know, all of the, the talking points and the messaging that we did about why they're important, we just need to pivot it to include how this was impacted by the pandemic and why it's still tremendously important, even though we are dealing with this very real and very ongoing crisis. Yeah, because the other problems are not going away. As you mentioned, from the outside, it seems like the political arena is so divisive right now. As a new member of the legislature, what's it been like for you to be able to go in there? And is it as divisive as it seems? Or are you able to reach across the aisle to get some of these issues resolved? In some cases, it is absolutely as divisive as it seems, unfortunately. Um, I mean, to be completely honest, I won my election by the most narrow margin in the House that year. So I am the most marginal member of the minority party. I hit roadblocks that other people, even in my caucus, wouldn't. And I hit roadblocks that certainly the majority party doesn't. That being said, there are some legislators over on the other side of the aisle that I completely trust to work on legislation with. Uh, there's a representative, Mike Mueller from the Fenton area. He and I have worked on multiple packages together. And as a matter of fact, the last, I hesitate to say normal session day because things were just ramping up with this crisis, but at the middle of March, uh, right before we you know, kind of suspended session for a little while, um, I had a bill package around price gouging. You know, That was something that we saw popping up all across the state, people getting charged you know, forty dollars for a pound of hamburger, toilet paper going for thirty dollars, things like that. And I had a three bill package uh, 
it was also bicameral. It was being introduced in the, the Senate as well. And I walked over to Mike and I said, this is important. I know it's impacting my community. I'm sure it's impacting yours too. I want this to be bipartisan. It's bipartisan in the Senate. I want to flag that this is an issue that we agree on. It's not political. It's something that we need to deal with. And he read him over for five minutes, put his name on him. We dropped him that day. And those policies ended up going in, or those, I'm sorry, those policies went into the attorney general and the governor's orders and policies around price gouging. So that was something that we actually got to accomplish, but it was important to me that that be a bipartisan effort because that's not just happening in democratic districts. It's not just happening in Republican districts. It was going on across the state. So it was very important to me that we make sure um, it it be handled that way and, and that it be clear that this was something we were working together on. As someone that this is your first term, what do you think your future is going to hold? I hate that question. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I am I'm running for re-election now, obviously, and uh, it would be an honor to continue representing the, the 19th House District. Um, past that, in all honesty, I'm just I'm trying to make sure I'm doing this job right now. Um, we have term limits. So, you know, tops, I get three terms in the state house and, and then I do have to find something else. Um, but right now, my top priority is just representing the, the 19th House District and making sure I'm doing that to the best of my ability, especially as this crisis continues to go on. One thing that we are seeing, I don't know if it's going to be for the good or for the bad, though, uh, because of the way politics are right now, there does seem to be a lot more interest in politics than I think I've ever remembered in the past, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. And even more so, I think people are paying so much more attention to our local state and uh, partners and not just who's on the top of the ballot. So knowing that, do you think going into the election that this is going to spur more interest in politics, especially for your younger generation? I think so. I certainly hope so. But I think so, too. Uh, you know, there's a number of people that have reached out uh you know since i i started running back in 2017 that have said um because you know like you said i i am young i'm not necessarily your your stereotypical politician and i also try to be very very accessible uh much to the consternation of both my campaign and my uh government staff so um you know being able to ask me questions and just you know, it can be very overwhelming to enter politics. And uh, that's something that I certainly understand and, and still feel, even though I've, I've been doing this for a little while. So I think having people who are much more accessible, because it's certainly not, not just me, uh, you know, a lot of my colleagues also make an effort to be very open and available for people uh, to just ask questions and find out how to get involved and what's the best way to start volunteering or start working in a legislative office. Um, I think has definitely helped uh, maintain that momentum and maintain that interest. So I, I do think that people are starting to pay more attention to more local races and more local offices. And I, I do think that that's going to result in more people kind of entering that political arena. Representative Lori Pohutsky with us on the Oakland County Megacast. Anything that we didn't touch on that maybe you want to get out to our viewers and our listeners? Uh, just. You know, I know that there's a lot of information out there. I know that it's it's very divisive right now. And no matter what side you fall on, it's just so, so important to vote. I know that there's a lot of talk right now about, you know, the, the security of mail-in voting and things like that. There's all kinds of security measures. Most of uh, my colleagues and I have been talking about them extensively. We've uh, put some policies into place. We've, we've voted on some legislation to help make it uh, a little bit more of a, a smooth process this year since it's you know there's some mitigating circumstances obviously so i just really want to encourage people to make a voting plan whether it's in person whether you're mailing in that ballot by october 19th or uh, whether you're dropping it off with your clerk just please stay engaged every vote does count thank you so much we do appreciate your time we know how busy you are good luck to you as well and continue to be an inspiration to all the younger people out there to get involved and be a part of the process.
don't just sit back and complain about it. Good luck to you. Thank you again for your time. Thank you for having me.